Hi, this is Dan Brunton with the Intel Corporation. In this video, the third of three, we're going to be wrapping up our conversation around Intel Endpoint Management Assistant with Intel Active Management Technology, focusing on troubleshooting AMT configuration issues and wrapping things up. Let's start out by talking about troubleshooting Intel AMT with Intel Emma. First, I'd like to talk about Wi-Fi profile synchronization. Uh, as of the recording of this video, there are two methods within our driver stack for synchronizing wireless profiles with Intel AMT and the operating system itself. Now, if you uh, find that you're having some trouble, there's a chance that you have the, the older method going, and these are the steps you can follow to debug that wireless profile sync. So first, of course, make sure you're running the latest Intel management engine and Wi-Fi drivers from your device's manufacturer. Next, check the registry and look in HK Local Machine Software Intel Wireless AT6. And there should be an option in there called IAMTE. It can have a number of values, but the ones that we suggest using are one of the two that we have here below. So if you set a value of two, it will enable a prompt that asks the end user if they would like to synchronize the Wi-Fi profile that they just created in Windows with the management engine. That's great for debugging purposes, but not necessarily great for uh, production usage. So we also have a value of 10, which will silently synchronize new Wi-Fi profiles without prompting the end user. And finally, once you've made these changes in the registry, you'll need to instruct your end users to delete any Wi-Fi profiles in Windows that they want to have synchronized, and then re-add those Wi-Fi profiles in Windows so that synchronization process will be triggered with Intel AMT. Next, I'd like to talk about the Intel Management and Security Status Tool, also known as IMSS. It's a tool that'll run on all your vPro clients. It'll give you basic information about Intel AMT. It will also let you know if you have a fast call for help or CIRA, Client Initiated Remote Session Status, going. And finally, if you are going to use use cases like KVM Remote Control, when you run IMSS, you have the option of allowing your end users to disconnect that remote control session if they need to for some reason. So highly recommended that you look at including this particular tool in your builds that you send out. Next, I'd like to talk about the Intel Emma Platform Manager. So the Emma Platform Manager lets you look at the status of your Intel Emma server as a whole. This is where you can go and check on the status of the components that make up the Emma solution. It's where you'll monitor events and can make some basic configuration changes. One important thing to point out here is that the Intel Emma Platform Manager does all of its logging at a server level. So all the examples we'll be talking about here all happen at a server level, uh, not at a tenant level. So you have to be a global administrator to interact with this tool and see all the logs that are there. All right, and speaking of logs, let's focus on the one that you probably will be looking at the most, the Intel Manageability Server Log. I've got three examples here of some fairly common messages that you might see with a little better meaning than what uh, is shown in Intel Emma right now. Let's just start out here at the top. So warning, host-based admin setup failed, auth failed. This is something you're going to see if you try and configure systems in admin control mode and you're using a certificate that does not match the DHCP option 15 that the system is seeing. Now, previously we talked about these cases where your certificate may not match the DHCP option 15 that the computer is getting from its local network and talked about being able to go in and change that TLS PKI DNS suffix in the MEBX to address this kind of issue. Next, we have our second message, Intel Manageability WS Management Exception. The underlying connection was closed. This is a fairly common message to see if the Intel Emma agent is starting to try and configure AMT uh, before the AMT driver stack is completely initialized on your end platform. So if this happens, it's something that will typically clear itself up automatically, uh, though if you want to try and do it manually, and you can restart the Intel Emma agent to retry configuration again if you so choose. So the last message we have here, warning, expired phase two record, is something you'll see come up if you make a change to one of your existing and in use Intel AMT profiles on your Intel Emma server. For instance, if you add or remove a wireless network, it'll kick off this process. And what happens then is Intel Emma will track all the devices that use that particular AMT profile and apply the changes that you just made to that profile to all those devices as they become available. So we write our server logs to disk as well as making them available in the Intel Emma Platform Manager. So if you'd like to import those logs into another log management or aggregation tool, you can do so. And the logs are going to be found in the C, Program Files, x86, Intel, Platform Manager, Emma Logs directory. And there'll be a separate log for each of the Emma services, and new log files are created every day. With that, let's take a look at the Intel Emma Platform Manager and give some examples of following the logs and watching a system with AMT configure. I've launched the Intel Emma Platform Manager, and if you've never used it before and need to add your server, let's step through that process now. Come down here to the Add Server button. 
provide the name of our MS server, the management port, which you specify during installation, defaults to 8000. Next, you need to supply a global admin account to log into it. And if you've never logged into this particular MS server before, it will pop up and ask you to verify the certificate that it's using to encrypt the communications. Click Accept. We're ready to go. We can see over here on the upper left-hand corner that uh, it's filled in. We see the name of our MS server, the default website for that server, as well as the Ajax server, manageability server, and MS Swarm server components that make up the MS solution. And we're going to focus on the manageability server today and on the events tab. This is where you're going to go through and see a list of everything that's happened as a computer has been configured for management with Intel AMT. Now, I've kind of loaded this up here with a couple of uh, scenarios to take a look at. First, if we scroll to the beginning of the log, you can see right here we have one of those 401 unauthorized error messages that I discussed earlier. In this case, it was generated because the system I was working with was not ready to be configured. It was a new system out of the box. It's working in a home network that has a different DHCP domain suffix than my provisioning certificate. So I actually had to go in and reset AMT on there in the MEBX, as we talked about, and add in that DNS suffix uh, that will override what comes from uh, option 15. We talked about that earlier in the video here. And once I did that, and was able to reload Windows, we'll see that now we have a, a successful provision. So if I come back here to the top, we'll see that that particular system provisioned correctly. And let me just step through quickly what the log looks like here when you're doing provisioning on a system. There's a few key messages you're going to want to look for when it gets started. Um, past all these errors here, you're going to see that provisioning is broken up into two phases. The first phase is where I go through and just do the basic configuration on the system to get it to the point that AMT is up and running, and we can start to configure all the functions that we're going to want to use. And that all happens in the second phase of configuration. So that you're going to see more towards the top here. This is where we go through and add in the certificates used for client initiator remote access. This is where we go through and create the accounts that are used to manage AMT on the device. This is where we also go through and apply things like wireless profiles, uh, enabling or disabling KVM user consent if you're working in admin control mode, that sort of thing. So you can see here it's all green. Everything's good. AMT has been configured on the system and it's ready to be managed at a hardware level. All right, let's wrap things up and talk about a few key points to remember. First, if you're going to use the TLS provisioning model instead of CIRA, you'll need at least one device online all the time running the Intel EMMA agent per subnet to relay Intel AMT traffic to other devices. If you have all your devices turned off on a particular subnet, there'll be no way for the Intel EMMA server to relay any commands to the devices on that subnet. Next, if you choose to use random MEBX passwords when you configure AMT, make sure you have a copy of that before you remove the device from Intel EMMA. When you stop managing a device in Intel EMMA, the record for that device, including that password, gets deleted. Uh, and this is important because depending on the OEM for your computer, you may or may not have an option to reset that password or reset Intel AMT. So again, if you do use randomized passwords and are going to be removing devices from Intel EMMA, just to be on the safe side, make sure you have a copy of that randomized password before you purge that device out. Next, I want to mention that Intel EMMA does what we call a full unprovision, not a partial unprovision, of Intel AMT. So what this means in English is if you're running AMT version 11 systems in your environment and have added things like custom root suit hashes or a PKI DNS suffix, that those entries from the MEBX will be removed when Intel EMMA does an unprovision, requiring you to go back in and re-add those entries into your environment. Now this does not happen on AMT 12 and above. This is a capability that's limited just to AMT 11. Well, this concludes the video series. Thank you for watching. If you have any more questions about this, please come find us at intel.com slash vpro.